So naturally, the topic of Episode 7 of The Bad Batch was, of course, the inhibitor chips. Once Captain Rex returned into the fold, and we suspected as much since with the Mortez sisters, we saw a mysterious character talking to the Mortez sisters and actually taking the head of the tactical droid, trying to make sense of it, of how the clones are used and will be used now that the Empire has them in their fold. That mysterious character that R7 projected was none other than Captain and Rex, it was finally confirmed in episode 7. However, the crazy part is that it didn't take long for Captain Rex to find out that none of the gang has removed their inhibitor chips, which of course made him wary right off the bat. He went for his blaster, knowing full well what the effects of the inhibitor chip would be if it is activated after the fact. He already went through this with Ahsoka and Jesse. Jesse and the entire clone armada that was on board their ship went after both of them. Captain Rex and Ahsoka escaped with their lives by the skin of their teeth. And now a throwaway line suggests that not only did the gang did not remove their inhibitor chips, and we know Wrecker was suffering with that mostly, but that Omega is different from all the other clones not only in appearance and gender, but now it seems that she does not have an inhibitor chip as well. In a seemingly offhand line, she mentions that she doesn't have a chip in her head. So far, no explanation has been provided as to why she doesn't, but the chip's absence will shed a crucial light on Omega's purpose and overall revealing more about how the cloning works in Kamino and in the Star Wars universe. The inhibitor chips are devices that we know are implanted in all clones as brains that allow the Empire to issue specifically about Palpatine issuing Order 66, which can override the entire conscious of a clone. As I said, we saw this with Jesse more specifically, Crosshair, and now in the last episode, Wrecker as well. In fact, we know now that the, the clone is entirely conscious once he enters the stage of Order 66. Wrecker, in fact, went on to apologize to Omega after they removed his chip entirely. Basically, what we know from Wrecker is that a clone is fully aware of what he is doing. He is consciously trying to stop himself, but to no avail. As we saw, Wrecker was unable to even flinch for his second. The only clone that was recorded to kind of for a split second revert back to his true self is Captain Rex as he warned Ahsoka to find fives. Other than that, no other clone really had the opportunity to create a diversion for him to escape Order 66 and that evil mentality. So even though the Bad Badge gang does not seem to be affected by the inhibitor chip except for Crosshair and now Wrecker, even though Hunter and Tech did not have any problems, they in the end elected to remove their inhibitor chips just in case. However, Omega is definitely immune to this control. The explanation, of course, lies that Omega is completely different from all the other clones. The only thing she shares with other clones is that she came from the Django DNA template. She is the first female clone to be based on Django Fett's DNA and acted not as a soldier, but as a medical assistant, something that the clones are not known for. It's possible that the Empire simply didn't see a need to install an inhibitor chip in Omega as she was not intended to be on the battlefield fighting alongside the Jedi, and then whenever Order 66 is executed, she will kill this subsequent Jedi. Furthermore, we don't know exactly the timeline of when she was created. Presumably, of course, she was created before Order 66, but she is a youngling after all, and we know that by the cloning process, their age is accelerated. Therefore, she might appear as seven or eight years old, but she might be younger than that in human years. If that is so, the events of the Bad Batch show why the Empire should have worried about controlling Omega anyway. Way. This is why you cross your T's and dot your I's. Again, what Luke Skywalker said to Palpatine in Return of the Jedi comes to mind. Your overconfidence is your weakness. Basically, the Empire moved into that manner. Once they grabbed control of everything, their overconfidence slowly grew to be something of a problem that they did not anticipate. Furthermore, the lack of an inhibitor chip could further suggest that Omega is different from other Star Wars clones in more than just appearance. Most clones in the army underwent growth acceleration to make them adults quickly. 
but by contrast, Omega still has a childlike appearance. So let's give an, a different scenario. If she is indeed like Boba Fett, which was a ordinary clone with no accelerated aging, she could be aging naturally, or at least closer to nature than the rest of the clone army. Perhaps she is not yet at that growth stage where an inhibitor chip could be safe to install. Creating a female clone from a male source likely involved a lot of genetic tampering, raising the question of, why it was worth all this trouble just to create a medical assistant. This is why the theories are spectacular about Omega. She is not all that she seems. She is definitely more than meets the eye, and everybody who meets Omega knows this immediately. In fact, that's what happened to Captain Rex. He immediately noticed that Omega is much more vigilant and careful than he anticipated, not just like an ordinary kid. It's possible that Omega has a much deeper purpose, and that's why an inhibitor chip could interfere with this purpose. Omega could be a Force-sensitive clone, after all, who definitely needed an unimpeded, un unmodified brain to work with. However, I don't doubt that given how obsessed Palpatine is with his empire and its growth, ultimately, as a chancellor, he sought to control his soldiers as much as possible. That much is evident with the inhibitor chips and the Kaminoans. The Kaminoans must have had an important reason for leaving one of its creations, which is Omega, uncontrollable and without an inhibitor chip. This means that Omega, unlike other clones, is completely free, and she exudes free will. Again, most if not all the other clones. So basically, Bad Batch Episode 7 shows that Omega's lack of an inhibitor chip, this proves to be an asset basically. She is able to break through to Wrecker to stop him from attacking his squad mates at times. However, the lack of an inhibitor chip suggests that Omega was specifically constructed with a secretive purpose in mind, which only gives way to why Lama Su wants to return Omega as soon as possible. If you look at the conversation between Nala Se and Lama Su in episode one, they are not even focusing more on Clone Force 99, rather focusing more their attention on Omega. Lama Su going as far as to say that they should not divulge the information that Omega is missing to Tarkin and Palpatine, giving you a clear idea that Omega was definitely made for something more than just serving as a medical servant in the facilities of Kamino. So this throwaway line in episode 7 that Omega doesn't have an inhibitor chip could hint, Dave Filoni might be hinting at us that there is a grander future to Omega in Clone Force 99 that we might have previously thought. So what do you guys think? What is the real purpose of Omega and how will this all pan out? Thank you guys so much for watching this video and if you enjoyed, leave a thumbs up down below, subscribe for dailies. Now you can have an awesome day Star Wars fans. I'll see you in the next video and may the force be with you. Until then.